First and foremost, allow me to invite Minister In Young Lee of the Ministry of Unification for his opening remarks. Please greet him to the stage with a big round of applause. Good morning. I am Lee In Young, Minister of Unification of the Republic of Korea. I would like to welcome you all to the Korea Global Forum for Peace, a multilateral international conference on peace and unification on the Korean Peninsula. Due to social distancing measures implemented following the spread of COVID-19, this year's conference will be held remotely online. But I'm nevertheless confident that for the establishment of peace on the Korean Peninsula, this conference will serve as a venue to facilitate dialogue among the international community and explore practical solutions toward the goal. This year's forum has been made possible through collaboration with 16 partner institutions from home and abroad, offering many informative sessions on a wide range of topics. I would like to extend my gratitude to all of our partners for their preparation and hard work. I would also like to thank Prime Minister Jong Se-gyun, Speaker of the National Assembly Park Byung-seok, U.S. Congressman Brett Sherman, and inaugural UNESCO Chair in Future Studies Professor Sohai Inayatula for their kind congratulatory remarks. In addition, I would also like to extend my sincerest gratitude to His Excellency United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres and Fermin Eduardo Amatoko, Assistant Director General of UNESCO, for extending their support for peace on the Korean Peninsula through special messages. And I also thank Executive Director David Bisley of the WFP, who will be addressing the audience with his keynote speech on the second day of the conference. The more than 190 speakers and moderators that will participate in this year's event are experts and scholars who study the Korean Peninsula issue and work on the front lines of peace to lead global public opinion. I would like to show my respect for their passion and for their devotion to the cause of peace. Last but not least, I would like to warmly welcome diplomatic corps from around the world as well as other distinguished guests who have joined us online this morning. This year's Forum's main theme is peace and prosperity on the Korean Peninsula, past, present, and the future. Discussions on the first day will examine issues on the Korean Peninsula using the paradigm of peace. And sessions on the second day will specifically discuss the topics of humanitarianism and change in North Korea. The final day will explore our roles and tasks ahead with regards to the future on the peninsula. Honorable guests. The past 70 years in Korea since the Korean War and the resulting separation has been a period of restoration and rebuilding. With the strong will to stand up once again, the Korean people have established economic and social foundation from the ashes of war and accomplished proud democratization and economic development of today. However, the war has not ended and the structure of division of the Korean Peninsula caused by the Cold War still firmly remains in its place even though the Cold War order collapsed years ago. Families separated by the war and the division of Korea have not been able to embrace each other for the past 70 years. Through our long history, the people of South and North Korea, who once lived together as a unified community, are now separated by the most heavily guarded border in the world, trapped by the divided structure that restricts their minds and territory as they are left to lead their incomplete lives. The Korean Peninsula stands before the perpetuation of division and peace and prosperity, a crossroad that will lead to different futures. Our choice is simple and clear, but the situation at hand is complex. Time stands still in U.S.-North Korea relations, as well, well, as well as relations between South and North Korea. While the indiscriminate spread of COVID-19 has further compounded the complexity in resolving issues on the peninsula, the intricate dynamics of international politics also remains as an obstacle to overcome. But our experiences from the past few years have made it clear that we ourselves need to take that extra step to bring about bold and meaningful change. It was in 2017 when the circumstances were most dire due to nuclear tests and other provocations by North Korea that President Moon Jae-in announced the Berlin Peace Initiative to the world. North Korea responded through Chairman Kim's New Year's address early 2018 this year, and that led to North Korea's participation in the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. And this paved the way for the two Koreas to begin an unprecedented journey towards peace. Later that year in April, the leaders of South and North Korea, through the Panmunjom Declaration, agreed for the first time in history on denuclearization and establishment of a peace regime on the peninsula. And in September, the Pyongyang Joint Declaration and the Comprehensive Military Agreement were concluded, with which the two Koreas began st taking steps to reduce military tension along the border. 
As the history of inter-Korean relations over the past 70 years has demonstrated, waiting for change and merely hoping for the situation to resolve itself will never lead to an improved future on the peninsula. The Ministry of Unification's volition towards peace and prosperity on the peninsula remains strong and resolute. We must bear in mind that we are not sailing through calm and open seas, but are breaking through thick ice to, ice to navigate new waters like an ice-breaking ship, such as an attitude expected of us. The former Chancellor of West Germany, Willy Brandt, who contributed to reunification of Germany through Ostpolitik, once said that smaller steps are better than no steps at all. By promoting smaller projects, I plan to resume humanitarian assistance, exchange and cooperation while restarting dialogue between the two Koreas and implementing the agreements made by the two Koreas one step at a time. From healthcare, joint disease control, climate change, the environment and other matters affecting our daily lives, these projects will address these issues and beyond to foster substantive cooperation that will further open the path towards peaceful coexistence. Focusing on the low-hanging fruits that the two Koreas can work on right now to make the change we will further build on that restored trust to open a broader platform for dialogue and negotiations. The two Koreas, through reciprocal cooperation, will regain confidence in the prospect of living together as one community, and I'm confident that we can speed up the Korean Peninsula peace process as well as assist denuclearization dialogue between the U.S. and North Korea as a result. Honorable guests, Korea was divided against our will but peace can only be achieved through our strongest efforts. With the two Koreas leading the way in cooperation with the international community, complete, verifiable, and irreversible peace must be achieved. And I'm hopeful that North Korea will respond to this call for a new beginning towards peace and prosperity on the Korean Peninsula. I hope we can restart the clock on our collective journey. Through solidarity and cooperation, the international community and the global civil society advocating peace are also invited to give us their voice in the process. The European coal and steel community, the Helsinki process, and German reunification all serve as lessons in which conflicts turned into peace and confrontations changed into prosperity. Such historic wisdom and introspection that culminated in these transitions, I hope, will be repeated on the Korean Peninsula. In particular, today, several international peace activists and NGO leaders will be appointed as goodwill ambassadors for the peace on the Korean Peninsula, which I'm honored to announce. I hope that the agenda of bringing peace to the peninsula will remain a pivotal part of the larger international peace movement and that the collective experience of the most acute confrontation of war by the two Koreas will be transformed into a message of peace that represents hope for the world. Honorable guests. In the face of numerous challenges and crises surrounding the Korean Peninsula, I still wish to convey my genuine belief that peace will eventually come our way. I would also like to share my hope that next year will bring about not only the end of the COVID-19 pandemic, but also transformative developments on the peninsula so that scholars from both South and North Korea can take part in the discussion for peace on the Korean Peninsula in its truest sense. I thank you all for your attention today, and I wish you all a good health and happiness. Thank you very much. Thank you once again for your uh, insightful and wisdom uh, remarks. Thank you very much. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, many of our distinguished guests have sent us their congratulatory messages through a video. But first, please welcome Mr. Pyeongseok Park, the Speaker of the National Assembly, through the screen. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Park pyeong -suk. I'm the Speaker of the National Assembly of the Republic of Korea. Congratulations on the opening of the 2020 Korea Global Forum for Peace. Uh, thank you very much to Minister Lee In-young and organizers at the Ministry of Unification. To everyone joining us online, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. The 2018 Pyeongchang Winter Olympics brought us a spring of peace, and we've witnessed three inter-Korean summits, and the U.S. DPRK leaders met twice after putting aside 70 years of hostility. The three leaders met at Panmunjom, and that was a historic incident indeed. But this spring of peace has not yet borne its blossoms. 
South and North Korea remain the last divided nation on Earth. The path to peace is much like the Gordian Knot, and that it is not easy to break. Although many challenges lie before us, we must overcome them. We must not move too quickly or come to a standstill. We must make steady progress forward. Peace on the Korean Peninsula has to do with the very survival of the 80 million Koreans living on this land. Our destiny must be decided by ourselves, and we must take those audacious steps forward. We must go on this path, and we will. Let us take those steps forward. It is always darkest before the dawn. For the sake of peace on the Korean Peninsula, the government, the National Assembly, and our people must pool our cooperation and wisdom. That's how we can obtain the necessary support from the international community. I hope that today's forum will allow us to take stock of the situation on the Korean Peninsula and present alternatives for a peaceful and prosperous Korean Peninsula. With the leadership of Minister Lee, whom I admire, our people's hopes for peace and unification will hopefully be realized soon. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Park. And next, we also have Prime Minister Hegyun Jung, who has sent us his message through another video. Please turn your attention to the screen. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to meet you in this time of hardships. It gives us great significance that 2020 Korea Global Forum for Peace is being held, and I offer my sincere congratulations to you. Every year to discuss peace on the Korean Peninsula, the Ministry of Unification of the Republic of Korea has been organizing this forum, and I commend them for their hard work. I would like to take a moment to thank our keynote speaker, Mr. David Bisley, the executive director of the World Food Program, and many experts from home and abroad for joining today. I welcome you all to the forum. This year marks the 70th anniversary of the start of the Korean War, which had divided one nation into two across thin barbed wires. At times, we had to go through challenging times marked by tension and conflict. Yet the path South and North Korea must take is all too clear. We cannot stop in mid-track. Slow and strenuous as it might be, we must persevere and move one step at a time towards peace and unification. 20 years ago, when the Joint Declaration of June 15 was signed, I remember the hands that South and North Korea held of each other. Two years ago, when the Panmunjom Declaration was announced, I remember the warm embrace that South and North Korea had for each other. The South and North were one and must be united again as one. As we're experiencing COVID-19 and abnormal climate events, we realize that South and North Korea are to each other the inseparable partners for the life and safety of each other once again. In this vein, the Korean government, starting with health care, epidemic prevention, disaster control, disaster control, and other matters concerning our lives, will yet again make the case for peace and unification. To create a community of life, we will endeavor to set the shared vision of South and North Korea and work together in unity. I hope that the Korea Global Forum for Peace will serve as a guidepost of hope towards that goal. For life and peace on the Korean Peninsula, I hope this forum will present in-depth and practical measures. In closing, I wish every one of you a great success and luck. Thank you. Thank you once again for your kind words, Prime Minister. Thank you very much. We also have some congratulatory video messages from overseas. So first, Mr. Sohail Inaya Tula, the inaugural UNESCO Chair in Future Studies, has sent his video. Please turn your attention to the screen. Congratulations to the Korean Global Forum for Peace. What you're doing is significant, it's important, and it will make a difference. The macro historian 
Brad Pollock argues the image of the future leads. First, we imagine the future. Then we engage in discussions about how to create the future. Then we work out the details. So what you are doing is crucial. The imagination of a Korean peninsula that's unified. Even going further, an Asian confederation. So continue your amazing work. Thank you so much for imagining a peaceful, a purposeful, a prosperous peninsula. Thank you so much, and I wish you hearty congratulations. Hello, I'm Congressman Brad Sherman from California's best name city, Sherman Oaks. For 24 years, I've served on the House Foreign Affairs Committee in the United States Congress in Washington, D.C. Please accept my best wishes for this year's gathering of the Korea Global Forum for Peace. As a senior member of the Foreign Affairs Committee and chair emeritus of its Asia subcommittee, I know the importance of the U.S.-Korea relationship. Although an armistice was signed in 1953, we technically remain in a state of war with North Korea. This does not serve anyone's interests. In July of 2019, my colleagues and I secured an amendment to the annual National Defense Appropriations Bill, putting Congress on record in support of diplomacy to formally end the Korean War. We all want peace, and that begins with acknowledging the obvious. The Korean War is over. Working with KPAC and my friend Casey Choi here in Los Angeles, I've joined my colleagues in introducing two pieces of legislation that call on the administration to work to hold reunifications between Korean American families and their relatives in North Korea. While there have been 21 family reunions between South Korean families and North Koreans, and that's far too few, none of them have involved Korean American families. We have more work to do to realize the dream of Korean reunification, of reuniting divided families, and a lasting peace. Let us continue to work toward that dream. I'm Congressman Brad Sherman. Thank you once again, Congressman Sherman, for your kind remarks. And once again, thank you to all of the distinguished guests who have sent their messages. And next, we will move on to the appointment ceremony for our goodwill ambassadors for the Korean Peninsula. At the appointment ceremony today, we have a research professor Taehoon Lee of Sungunghae University, Professor Sungwook Yun of Chungbuk National University, and Director Ju Jin Chung, Center for Peace and Conflict Resolution, here on site. And we also have uh, Professor Tung Jin Kim, the IRC Marie Curie Fellow at Trinity College, Dublin, Ireland. We also have Mary Joyce, the Northeast Asia Regional Liaison Officer from the Global Partnership for the Prevention of Armed Conflict. And last but not least, we have co-president Ms. Lisa Paletti-Clark from the International Peace Bureau who are participating online. So now we will deliver the letters of appointment. So with that, I would like to invite Minister Lee as well as our three guests up onto the stage. Please welcome them with a big round of applause. Letter of appointment for Goodwill Ambassadors, Research Professor Taehoon Lee of Songgongwe University is appointed as a Goodwill Ambassador for Peace on the Korean Peninsula to increase the international community's interest in peace and also to expand the public di diplomacy network. September 7, 2020, Minister of Unification, In Young Lee. Congratulations. Next, letter of appointment for Goodwill Ambassadors, Professor Songwook Yun of Chungbuk National U University. The contents are the same as the previous letter. Congratulations. <clears throat> letter.
Letter of Appointment for Goodwill Ambassadors, Director Chu Jin Chang from the Center for Peace and Conflict Resolution. The contents are the same as the previous letter. Congratulations. And next, the Goodwill Ambassadors will take a group photo along with Minister Lee. And for those who were unable to participate today, we will deliver the letter of appointment. So please open up and hold your letters for the photo. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Please give them another big round of applause, and you may now return to your seats. And with his appointment, research professor Tehun Lee of Songgonghae University will represent all the other goodwill ambassadors when he says a few words. Hello, I've just uh, been appointed as a goodwill ambassador for peace in the Korean Peninsula. I am very pleased, but I also feel a heavy sense of responsibility being here today. A goodwill ambassador would work towards a settlement of peace on the Korean Peninsula. And for a sustainable peace on Korean Peninsula, we would have to work with many actors on the civil society stage and experts as well. Our role is to expand the networks with these many different actors. In this regard, uh, public diplomacy would be instilled with the values of peace, and we will orient ourselves towards peace and try to empower civil society and pull the efforts and wisdom of civil society. And I believe that is the uh, responsibility that has been given to me as a Google ambassador. We want to support a sustainable peace for the Korean Peninsula. I want to search as many messengers in that regard. There are many NGOs, existing NGO networks, and I want to expand on the cooperation with these ex existing networks. I want to look at the significance and the importance of uh, peace on the Korean Peninsula through public diplomacy. And to that end, I believe that the uh, support and cooperation of the civil society and of the people will be very important going forward. The Ministry of Unification, and in particular, Minister Lee, have given me this uh, responsibility, and I thank you for the honor. Thank you and congratulations, Professor Lee. And now next, we also have a video message from co-president Ms. Lisa Paletti-Clark of the International Peace Bureau. Please turn your attention to the screen. Dear friends, thank you so much for having offered me the honor of becoming a goodwill ambassador for peace on the Korean Peninsula. I accept with humility, and it is really an honor for me. Thank you. I have only ever been to Korea twice. I am certainly not an expert on peace in the Korean Peninsula. But I have witnessed on both the occasions when I was in Korea the incredible enthusiasm and determination of uh, civil society organizations, of uh, local government institutions, and in general, of all the people I met in Korea, the enthusiasm for peace and the determination and resilience against things going wrong. I am a part of the International Peace Bureau. I am its co-president currently. And this is a global organization which tries to offer networking opportunities to organizations from all over the world that are essentially interested in peace building from a civil society perspective. Of course, influencing the institutions, but starting from grassroots. That's how our organization began. And it seems to me that my experience in Korea has shown me that that is exactly what's happening with the Korean peace process right now. Uh, this is a contribution that I think, as a European, I can offer to the Korean peace process, which is to spread information about what's happening in Korea. Naturally, we can all contribute by signing petitions uh, and all the campaigns that demand 
that a peace treaty be finally signed, that the Korean War finally be ended, uh, but also that we can begin to think more about how we can promote reconciliation and cooperation across the demilitarized zone and between the Koreas and, and uh, help in this in the peace process. Uh, I think it's also terribly exciting for us Europeans and from other continents as well to learn more about what's been happening in Korea. For example, very few people that I have met have heard of the sunshine policy. And the fact also that it is linked to something which is deeply embedded in our European culture, which is the Aesop fable from which uh, President Nobel laureate Kim Dae-jung uh, derived his sunshine policy. This is uh, a story that really is part of our culture, it's part of the world culture. And it proves, once again, if this were needed, that human societies uh, are not stopped by physical nation, by national borders. We all have similar outlooks when we think of peace. So I hope that as a foreigner, as a European, as a non-expert in Korean affairs, I can, however, contribute to disseminating greater information producing greater exchanges and contacts, all of which always works positively towards, uh, with a synergistic uh, relationship so that information can increase and greater cooperation can lead to reconciliation and peace. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Clark. And next we have Professor Tung Jin Kim of Trinity College, who is also is saying a few words through a video. Hello, I'm a Goodwill Ambassador for Peace on the Korean Peninsula, Kim Dong Jin. First, to broaden global interest in peace on the Korean Peninsula and facilitate the international peace movement and peace public diplomacy network. I have been appointed as a goodwill ambassador for peace on the Korean Peninsula. I thank you for giving me this honor. In particular, as this year marks the 70th anniversary of the Korean War and the 20th anniversary of the Joint Declaration of June 15, it is meaningful that the Ministry of Unification has organized this gathering of global scholars, experts, and peace activists, the Korean Global Forum for Peace, and has appointed me as their goodwill ambassador. I feel all the more honored as a researcher on peace. Peace on the Korean Peninsula requires mutual understanding and cooperation between the two Koreas and at the same time calls for understanding and cooperation of the international community. To that end, in various forum for public debate at home and abroad, I will work to raise interest and understanding of peace on the Korean Peninsula and help facilitate goodwill and cooperation and further to contribute to expanding this public debate on peace. I now work and live in Ireland, a place I believe has similar experiences with that of the Korean Peninsula in terms of national division, sufferings from a war, and sustainability of the peace process. Moving forward, for scholars and civil society peace activists and experts from the two nations, I will exert great endeavors to promoting their exchange and cooperation. Furthermore, with researchers and peace activists from other conflict regions, I seek to continue cooperation with them so that they become more aware of the peace process on the peninsula and also for mutual learning of policies, solidarity, and cooperation. A platform can be established to end the 70-year-old world war and build peace on the Korean Peninsula. We are carrying out this Korean Peninsula peace process. And this process is not just a matter that pertains only to the Korean Peninsula, but also to world peace that is aspired by citizens across the globe. In our international peace research and movements, I will stay firmly committed to ensuring that case studies and agendas of the Korean Peninsula are fully incorporated in the process. Once again, I thank you once again for appointing me as your goodwill ambassador. I wish everyone good health. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now, last but not least, we have another video message from Liaison Officer Mary Joyce from the Global Partnership for the Prevention of Armed Conflict. Let us greet her through the video. 
Dear friends and colleagues, it is my great honor to share this message with you as a newly appointed Goodwill Ambassador for Korean Peninsula Peace. My name is Mary Joyce, and I am the Northeast Asia Regional Liaison Officer for the Global Partnership for the Prevention of Armed Conflict, or GPAC. GPAC is a global member-led network of civil society organizations who actively work on conflict prevention and peace building. In Northeast Asia, this network is coordinated by the international NGO Peace Boat, based where I am in Tokyo. Peace for the Korean Peninsula is crucial not only for the Korean people, but also for the broader Northeast Asian region and indeed for the entire world. With this at heart, GPAC has been promoting a regular civil society dialogue for the peace and stability of the Korean Peninsula through what we call the Ulaanbaatar process, involving participants from both sides of the DMZ, as well as from other countries throughout Northeast Asia. Such dialogue, in as many different forms and different spaces as possible, is crucial to preventing armed conflict, to building mutual trust, finding ways to overcome tensions, and coming up with creative ways to sustain peace. Civil society, in cooperation with actors from other sectors, plays a vital role in this process, and in enabling dialogue and collaboration between communities and societies polarized by conflict. While we may have different nationalities and backgrounds, different political systems and beliefs, we come together in this process with the common recognition of the urgent need for peace on the Korean Peninsula and with belief in the significant role that civil society, including women and youth, can play. We also come with the greatest respect for the leadership and efforts of the Korean people towards this over many long decades and a deep responsibility as members of the international community to do all that we can to support such efforts, including the recently launched Korea Peace Appeal. 70 years have now passed since the Korean War and the division of the Korean Peninsula. This is 70 years too long. As a goodwill ambassador, I hope to contribute in whatever small way I can to international efforts to support the leadership of the Korean people towards ending the Korean War and turning the armistice into a peace agreement, towards creating a Korean Peninsula, Northeast Asian region and a world free from nuclear weapons and from nuclear threats, and towards transforming current tensions, mistrust, hostility and competition into a new future of dialogue, cooperation, sustainable peace and genuine human security. I hope that this role can be more than symbolic, but an opportunity to have challenging discussions, to build bridges between different sectors, and to develop more connections and partnerships for creative action. I look forward to working with you all to this end. Thank you. Thank you very much for that video. And once again, congratulations to all of the Goodwill Ambassadors who are appointed today. Ladies and gentlemen, with this, we will conclude the opening ceremony and appointment ceremony. Thank you for watching.